myself Dr. Devanjan Mandal. I'm a physical therapist. Today we are going to perform three tests for a scalenius muscle. These three tests are scalenius cramp test, scalenius relief test, and finger flexion test. Through this test, we can differentiate if a patient is complaining that he or she has a radiating pain in the neck, shoulder, and weakness, and if the patient is also having numbness or tingling sensation in the finger. So through this test, we can differentiate that the pain is coming from scalenius muscle or it is coming from cervical radiculopathy. Before going to start this test, we should know a little bit about scalenius triangle. The scalenius triangle, also known as the interscalenius triangle, which is located laterally at the root of the neck. The interscalenius triangle is bordered anteriorly by the posterior edge of the anterior scalenius muscle, posteriorly by the anterior edge of the middle scalenius muscle, and inferiorly by the superior aspect of the first rib. If scalenius muscles got shortened, that can elevate the first rib and increase the pressure in the interscalenius triangle, which can compress the root and trunk of the brachial plexus and the third part of the subclavian artery and vein. This can cause pain and weakness in the shoulder, neck, and numbness in the fingers. So first, we will start scalenius cramp test. So patient should be in sitting position. Then we have to tell the patient rotate the head to the affected side and try to touch your chin above the clavicle, the hollow space, and hold this one for 60 seconds. While doing this, if patient is complaining that he has a pain in local in this area or in the neck area that means there is some trigger point in the scalenius muscle and if pain is start radiating up to the arm and shoulder that means there might be a case of flexopathy or there might be a chance of thoracic outlet syndrome so this is all about scalenius cramp test clinical findings for scalenius associated symptoms posteriorly pain is referred to the upper vertebral border of the scapula and the area medial to it. Anteriorly aching pain is referred to the pectoral region. Laterally refer pain down to the front and back of the arm. Skip the elbow and reappear on the radial side of the forearm and may extend to the thumb and index finger. Pain on ulnar side with puffiness of the hand suggested brachial plexus and subclavian vein entrapment causes ulnar pain, tingling and numbness. Typically no restriction in neck movement. Common misdiagnosis with scalenius muscle, cervical spine, articular dysfunction, thoracic outlet syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome, C5 C6 radiculopathy, and if patient has scalenius shortening due to trigger point or musculospasm that can pull the first rib and increase the pressure in the interscalenius triangle, which can create radiating pain on the trunk. If it happens on the left side, patient can be misdiagnosed with angina pectoralis. Before going to perform a scalenius relief test, we should discuss little bit about scalenius muscle which will give us a clear picture about the orientation and position of the first rib, clavicle and scalenius muscle. Scalenius anterior muscle take origin from anterior tubercle of the transverse process of C3 to C6 vertebra and take insertion on the scalenius tubercle on the inner border of first rib. Function. The action of the anterior scalenius muscle is to elevate the first rib. They also act as accessory muscle of inspiration along with the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Scalenius medius muscle takes its origin from the posterior tubercle of the transverse process of C2 to C7 vertebra and insertion on the upper surface of the first rib. Function The action of the middle scalenius muscle is to elevate the first rib. They also act as accessory muscle of inspiration along with the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Hello everyone, now we are going to perform the scalenius relief test. Generally, we do this test to remove the pressure underneath the clavicle, whatever structure is going through, basically subclavian artery, subclavian vein and the brachial plexus. 
so what we have to do patient should be in supineline position then we have to tell the patient take the painful arm on top of the head especially elbow on top of the forehead and hold this position while doing this patient will complain or patient will report that pain got relieved pain got reduced within few minutes or it can be happen immediately while doing this what we are trying to do we are trying to elevate the shoulder blade and lift the clavicle so that whatever important structures is going through above the first rib those things got relieved like brachial plexus or subclavian artery and subclavian vein and in this maneuver whatever procedure we are following it is not going to affect if patient has a cervical radiculopathy refer pain of the scalenius anterior syndrome may be relieved by elevation of the arm and clavicle because in this maneuver that may remove pressure from a structure traveling or attaching to the first rib which can be elevated by certain scalenius muscle due to trigger point or might be there is some muscle spasm so this scalenius relief test make use of this principle the patient should place the painful forearm across the forehead while raising and pulling the shoulder forward to lift the clavicle off the underlying scalenius muscle and brachial plexus so pain relief when it happened patient will tell immediately or it might be take few seconds so through which we can figure it out that pressure got relieved none of this position in this maneuver should affect the pain due to cervical radiculopathy one more thing we can add like while doing this test if we place our both fingers just behind the sternocleidomastoid muscle so how to palpate sternocleidomastoid muscle we have to tell the patient to raise his or her head so this is the sternocleidomastoid muscle just beneath the sternocleidomastoid muscle we have to place our both finger then we have to tell the patient to do this maneuver and while doing this we can feel or we can see like both the fingers dig in automatically back side of the clavicle so that's how in this test pressure got reduced or relief relax so this is all about scalenius relief test finger flexion test with the proximal phalanges extended normal fingers close with all finger tips pressed tightly against the metacarpophalangeal joint volar surface or volar groove positive scalenius test we will consider when if patient is not able to completely flex all the fingers tightly that indicate more general involvement and inhibition of the long flexor muscles which can occur when a scalenius trigger point are active on the same side so this is all about finger flexion test